Right, so there have been some disastrous starts to election campaigns, but I can't recall one ending up requiring a police escort on day one to rescue a candidate from their own would-be constituents. But this is what has happened literally at the campaign launch in North Durham for full-time Israel lobbyist, Labour fixer, and the guy who gave himself a safe Labour seat to run for, Luke Akers. Akers' launch saw blatant racism, protests against his candidacy, a punch-up, Labour activists walking out in disgust, and even news of a potential challenge to him standing. Having foisted himself upon a part of the country, this Oxford resident appears to have no connection with. Right, so a wee bit of footage there following Lou Gaker's selection campaign launch in North Durham where he has installed himself as the candidate to all intents and purposes, having been on the NEC and overseeing candidate selections. A lovely safe Labour seat that the party has held since 1983, and Akers figures even he can get elected there, having failed to get elected on his own merit to Parliament on two separate occasions in 2001 and 2005. The local people are not happy. Word is getting around, apparently, that the Labour candidate has been imposed on them, and who he is, and where he's from and what he stands for and given the protesters there were very vocal about Palestine his staunch unshakable Zionist leanings his job as a lobbyist for the apartheid state of Israel is what he's best known for aside from his influence on Labour Party members and candidates and therefore they came out in force the fact the process is so corrupt that five no fewer than five NEC members who vote to decide who can be a Labour candidate seem to have awarded themselves candidacies in favourable seats, such as Akers, will go down like a cup of cold sick too. The police recalled to that protest, the protesters preventing Akers from escaping from his own campaign launch. Threats of attack came from four or five of Akers' supporters against the protesters, allegedly. And certainly after the police arrived, there was a little bit of a dust-up following those scenes, of which there is some alleged footage of that attack. I've not reproduced it here, it can be found on social media, where a woman holding a Palestine flag got dragged around the road by the hair by, I can only assume, an Acres supporter, because there is a few backing him there. Can't say they're necessarily locals, but not many, though. Let's go back a bit here, though. We've rushed to the end where he's making his escape, haven't we? Here he is, celebrating with all the people he could muster to stay to support him. Apparently, the two men and local councillors and the woman, one of their wives, apparently a former councillor herself, Surely more people than that turned up. Well, yes, they did. Here's a picture inside of Pelton Community Centre where things kicked off for Akers, where it all began. Not the biggest of crowds, but what that picture belies is that apparently far more Labour members had walked out and left the centre in disgust, refusing to be photographed with him. And naturally, people have had their fun with that image, as social media will. References to Akers' infamous support for the nuclear arms deterrent there, amongst others. Quite the beloved character he is, I'm sure you can agree. Not least amongst those who had already booked the hall that day for a children's birthday party, which Akers chose to, well, interrupt rather than hold his campaign launch somewhere else or at a different time, making friends already. It's also a very white picture there, isn't it? All the people willing to be photographed with Akers, not very much not from ethnic minorities. But the worst incident of all was undoubtedly this. By the way, look, just so you know. Fascist imposter. Your politics belong at the BMP, mate. <laughs> Palestina. We must belong in Iran, but we're not shouting about that. Palestina. We belong in Iran. Are you looking at brown people when you say that? <laughs> As Palestine protesters filmed or attempted to film Luke Akehurst in his car, we know he was in the car from that earlier little bit of footage, therefore the large woman outside put a placard across the screen to prevent them from doing so and 
when they started chanting about Palestine, saying Akers beliefs belong in the BNP, which might shock you, but actually the BNP are pro-Zionist themselves, as this excerpt from the Jewish Chronicle, a very pro-Zionist publication, shows. The BNP website stated, the demand of Israel to be a Jewish state underpins the existence of that nation and is identical to the British National Party's demand for Britain to remain an ethnically majority British state. So they directly compare their own policies themselves for Britain to be identical to Israel's beliefs for Israel about their right to exist too. But that wasn't the bit that made this incident the worst scene of all. It was the response from an Akers supporter saying in response, and yours belong in Iran, but we're not shouting about that. Now, it was clearly a woman who spoke that. There is only one woman in frame standing there that we can see. But because we didn't actually see her say this, although clearly the way the camera then pans across to her, it does heavily imply that it came from her, we can't say for certain. However, given who that is, it does warrant investigation. Because not only is it warranting investigation because this is Luke Akers, this is an NEC representative of the Labour Party, this is the candidate that, well, chose himself to all intents and purposes to stand there, but that woman was Luke Akers' wife. Linda Smith, as she's known as, is a currently serving councillor herself on Oxford City Council, and therefore Labour need to investigate her too, in her, in her own right. Labour run that council, and she is in fact the housing portfolio holder, and has hit the news since Acres' declaration to be standing in North Durham, because she has said she will not be standing down from her position on the council. So will they be living separately now, or uh, will she be running the housing portfolio in Oxford from North Durham? Akers, incidentally, though, has also run to get onto Oxford City Council in his time, and he, yeah, failed to get elected there, too. But as an elected Labour figure herself, Linda Smith, that, now, that comment of hers now demands investigation, because it's trope, an Islamophobic and anti-Semitic trope, all rolled into one, since making this reference to Palestinian activists, when you can appreciate the Palestinian people are themselves a Semitic people, and are also majority Muslim. So they belong somewhere other than Palestine, is... So saying that is clearly racist on both counts. But to say it to people protesting that their views belong in Iran, some of whom were British Asian, apparently, compounds that too. There has to be a Labour Party investigation into this incident. It's disgusting, blatant racism, violence on the streets of North Durham, and it involves some, someone who is an elected representative of the Labour Party. And we need to know for sure if it was Acre's wife who obviously said that, as is heavenly implied by the footage. And what that therefore says about him as a candidate, especially in light of that fact that for years now, under the Starmer regime, the National Executive Committee, of which he is part of, has been purging disproportionate numbers of left-wingers from Labour on the grounds of racist conduct, chiefly anti-Semitism, as we know, because this is yet another example of that Labour Party hierarchy of racism in action, where some kinds of racism are treated as worse than others. But if his own wife indulges in racist tropes like that, if indeed she did say that, somebody did, somebody connected to his campaign there, who was it, if not her, then what does that say about him? What message does that send out to the people of North Durham? And given that this is Luke Akers we're talking about here, would Starmer or anyone else on the NEC do anything about this? Or can we expect him to be given a free pass? Because actually, this guy is a lot more influential within the party than you might think, and frankly is actually untouchable. Well, local people, local members and activists are clearly not willing to tolerate Akers' presence because yesterday a crowdfunder launched called Opposing Luke Akers in North Durham, seeking £5,000 to mount a campaign to produce electoral materials to educate the people of North Durham about that Labour candidate, who he is, what he stands for, and urge them to take their votes elsewhere, and already it's cleared the £3,000 mark. The campaign blurb reads... The Labour Party have imposed Luke Akehurst, who is the director of anti-Palestinian organisation We Believe in Israel, as a candidate in North Durham. He has zero connection to the constituency and is being ran as the candidate because the Labour Party consider it a safe seat and an easy win to get this person into Parliament. This is a fighting fund to pay for messaging, literature, leaflets and other resources that will inform the electorate of North Durham about the views and positions of the Labour candidate in order to oppose him at the upcoming general election. There is very little time to get organised, so please consider contributing to this fund as sending information and material to the electorate can be quite costly. And I sincerely wish them the best of luck 
for that campaign. Chip in if you can. If Labour thinks they can dump whoever they wish, wherever they wish, and still win, they need to be shown otherwise. Not just in North Durham, but everywhere else in the country as well. In fact, even established Labour MPs might be getting a bit uncomfortable right now as the party's stance on Israel and Gaza, which Akerst represents on steroids, could well see some big Labour names fail to be returned as MPs. Such is the disgust in their constituencies at this, as this video recommendation will tell you all about. I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.